The other one I just wanted to cover, because some, some points came up last week, so I just wanted to go over this again just to sort of clarify it, but about the thighs being nakedness. And, you know, I, I feel that Exodus 28, 42 really is the key passage, because this is where you would determine that thighs are nakedness, if you took the interpretation that some people would to say that thighs and loins are included in the nakedness being defined here. Um, to the Isaiah passage, which talks about the lady uncovering her locks, making bare the leg, passing over the rivers, uncovering the thigh. Because um, you'd need to start with this to say, okay, the thigh is nakedness, and therefore in the Isaiah verse, um, you would only take the thigh as saying that her nakedness is being uncovered. So I feel like this is really the key verse. I don't think there's a, really another verse to make the case that thighs are nakedness. I think it would all stem from this verse. So Exodus 28, 42, let's just read that. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach. Now, one thing I just want to point out first of all is in Exodus 28, 42, it's not actually defining what nakedness is. I know you think that the plain reading of this passage, it's not actually telling you what nakedness is. All it's, all, what this verse is actually about, it's giving direction to Moses and to the people building the tabernacle and building all the clothes, the length of these linen breeches, right? Because it doesn't say, and thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, even the loins and the thighs. Because if it was to say that, then you can say, ah, there you go. Nakedness is defined as loins and thighs. Like it says in the Isaiah passage where, remember when Isaiah preached naked, it says, you know, they'll see your nakedness, even the buttocks will be uncovered, right? So I believe that's a much clearer verse to say that, hey, nakedness and buttocks, buttocks are actually being defined as nakedness in that passage. But in this passage, I mean, the plain reading of this passage, it's not even defining what nakedness is. All it's saying is the linen breeches are going to cover the nakedness and the linen breeches are going to go from the loins to the thighs. So it's not actually saying nakedness is loins and thighs. It's saying nakedness is going to be covered and the breeches, you need to make them so that they go from the loins to the thighs. Now, the argument would be that because the argument for loins and thighs being nakedness would say, well, because there is nothing between loins and thighs, it wouldn't make sense because if it's covering something between the loins and thighs, but the loins and thighs are connected, then you're not actually wearing anything. Whereas we would say, well, I would say that there is something between the loins and the thighs. It's your nakedness, which is what the linen breeches are covering. So what I sort of thought about was, well, actually, the, 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 the dispute is really on what the definition of loins is. Because if loins are your genitals, then people will say, like, well, you're not half covering your genitals, so therefore it's all covered. And if you're covering from your loins to your thighs, then why would you cover only one and not the other if only one is considered nakedness? So I thought, well, let's, well, let's look at what, what, what loins is actually is. Because I, I always assumed that loins were the waist. But other people think that loins are, you know, the, the, the front part of your genitals and, and the back part is your buttocks. So I actually looked up on dictionary.com what the, um, uh, the definition was. So it gives a couple of different definitions. So the first one, it says here, usually loins, and, you know, I don't think this would really be the basis of how we determine truth, but sometimes going to a dictionary is helpful. So it says here, usually loins, the part or parts of the human body of a quadruped, Oh, sorry, the part or parts of the human body or of a quadruped animal, so that's an animal that work, walks on all fours, on either side of the spinal column between the false ribs. So your false ribs are your lowest ribs and the hip bone. So the very first definition of loins is this area of your body. Second definition, a cut of meat from this region of the animal, especially a portion including the vertebrae of such parts. So it's like when you go to the shops and you buy a, the loin cut, right? It's, it's, the, it's the meat that comes from that area that's defined as the loins. Now, the third definition of loins, I mean, it's it divided into two here. The part of the body between the hips and the lower ribs, especially regarded as the seat of physical strength and generative power. So that's interesting that it's saying it's not only this area, but it's also used like euphemistically to to talk about a, a person's strength in their loins. Um, and that's where you get the euphemism, like the fruit of your loins or the children of your loins, um, because it's also regarded as the, uh, the sort of the seat of generative power where, you, uh, where a person uh, can uh, beget children. And then B, the second, def the second definition in number three is the genital and pubic area genitalia. And it talks about some 
uh, idioms. I think it's interesting here that when it looks at the origin of the word, it comes from some Latin word, lum. So if you think of a lumbar support on a chair, you're not supporting your genital. Like a lumbar support is not something that's on the seat of the, <laughs> you know, like a bicycle seat on your chair. You know, the, the, the lumbar support is something that supports your back, this area, right, and your lower back. So there's a couple of definitions, but notice that, you know, because uh, Gersh and I were talking about this, and we were saying like, well, is loins this, or is loins your genitals, or is it both? But there's actually no, there's actually no definition here that includes both. Because, you know, when you, when you look at a word in a dictionary and there's like three different meanings, you don't say it's either one or the second or the third. You don't say, oh, it's two and three simultaneously. Do you know what I mean? You don't say it's all three definitions simultaneously. So there isn't actually a dictionary definition that says loins includes both this area and the hips and the groin and your genitals. There is one definition later on in, in the British version. I saw here. It says here, the hips and the inner surface of the legs where, where they join the trunk of the body, which is the crotch. So your crotch is not actually your genitals. Your crotch, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm pointing there, but you know, like your, your crotch is, you know, that, that area on either side. Uh, it's not actually the genitals, which I believe is what uh, the Bible defines as nakedness. So my point is, there is no definition which just says it's all that area, but it's like one or the other. So, it, you know, it could be genitals or it could be this, this area. Now, if... If we take, uh, if we just stop there, I would say that, you know, the first definition supports my view, which is there is something between the loins and the thighs. The loins is here, the thighs are down here, you're covering your nakedness. That makes sense if the linen breeches go from your loins to your thighs. So I think that already weakens the argument that there is nothing between the loins and the thighs and therefore loins are nakedness because the primary definition is it's here. So whilst I don't think that totally destroys the other argument, the point I'm trying to make is if somebody's going to be dogmatic using Exodus 28, 42 to say, thus saith the Lord, you know, thighs are nakedness, I'm just sort of making the point to you that that argument is not as strong as you think it is. You know, that that verse, first of all, is not actually defining nakedness. There is, there could be something between the loins and the thighs, um, and it's not actually saying what nakedness is. Now, let's look at a couple of verses in the Bible, because I think if we see the way it's actually used in the Bible, I think it makes a stronger case for the fact that loins are here and, and not your genitals. Now, I do acknowledge that the Bible does use the euphemism of, you know, the, the fruit of your loins. Let me show you some here. Hebrews 7.10, talking about, you know, the tithes here, saying that Abraham paid tithes in, in Melchizedek. In verse 9, it says, And I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paith tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Now you might say, well, you know, obviously from, you know, from your genitals is where, you know, the man's seed comes from. But then this could also be referring to that first definition where the loins is the seat of generative power. And it's just using the euphemism because Levi was not actually in Abraham, you know what I mean? Like the seed was there. It's just saying that he was not yet born um, before Abraham paid tithes in Melchizedek. Um, again here in Acts 2.30, this is talking about David, therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So again, I think I, that phrase is used euphemistically. It's not actually saying that like men give birth to children and it comes out of their genitals. Um, and I'll just show you here, because look at this, um, Genesis 15. Because this is, this is another phrase that he used talking about men bringing forth children. It says here, look, and the, behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So, you know, your bowels have nothing to do with reproduction, but it's a euphemism, right? To say, you know, it's, it's talking probably about that definition to say it's like your seat of generative power or your strength you know bowels you know you have bowels of compassion you know but it's not like it's not like your bowels actually have any you know compassion in there it's a it's a, it's a euphemism um, so let me show you some verses from the bible in regards to loins that i think support the fact that loins are up here uh second kings so this is about Elijah. It says, And they answered him, 
he was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. So again, like girding up your loins, a girdle about your loins. I mean, most of us would think of this as a belt, like, you know, girt about with truth, like the belt of truth holding your pants up. Um, so, I mean, can loins mean genitals in this passage? I mean, it would be kind of weird if like, he's met Elijah and he's girt with leather about his loins and it's like on his genitals. So that, that, that wouldn't make sense. Um, look at this verse here. This is Job talking about Behemoth. It says, Lo, and I think this is a pretty good verse that sort of defines loins. It says, Lo, now his strength is in his loins and his force is in the navel of his belly. So your navel is your belly button. So it's, 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 I think it's sort of restating the same thing, like your strength is here and his force, his strength, is in the navel of his belly. Um, Isaiah 21, 3. Look at this one. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I, bow, I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. So when you read that, it, it compares the pain in his loins comparing it to the pangs of a woman in birth. Now, when a woman's travailing in birth, she's not like, oh, like, on a, like a guy that's just been hit in the groin, right? Like, she's like this. She's like, oh, because this is where the contractions are happening. So, again, I think, you know, it's referring to the loins are up, this upper area up here. Um, there's another verse like this in Jeremiah. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. So you can imagine something like this, right? Like, like a man travailing in pain like a woman uh, in childbirth, <coughs> not a man with his um, hands on his groin. Um, this is an interesting one. I'd rather show you this. Ezekiel 8, 2. <laughs> it's another one with loins. It says, then I beheld. So Ezekiel, I believe, gets this vision of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, that's what I think it is. Then he says, then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. So he sees this figure, and from the loins downward, it's fire, and from the loins upward, it's, it's amber. Now, I think this is interesting because, you know, Exodus 28, 42 talks about from the loins even to the thighs. And people will say, well, it says from, it must include it. But then think about this. If this, if this figure is there, and from the loins upward, from the loins downward is fire, but the loins upward is amber. Then obviously the loins must be like a singular reference point, right? Because how can he, how can the loins be fire and amber at the same time if it's saying from the loins upward, including the loins? Because that would mean that let's say your loins are here, your loins are fire, but then your loins are also amber from the other side of your loins. So obviously it, the Bible can use this phrase to say from your loins upward and from your loins downward, meaning like at that point. So. My point is here, it uses sort of the same words of from the loins, you know, from the loins even to the thighs of shall, they shall reach. Doesn't necessarily mean it's covering the whole loins. Does that make sense? Because then how could you say from this point downwards and this point upwards? Because then there'd be a region that is both fire and amber. Does that make sense? So anyways, um, so my point is, you know, I, I don't know whether I can like absolutely destroy the other, the other side, but all I'm saying is I think there's a very strong case that the right interpretation of Exodus 28, 42 is has nothing to do with telling you what nakedness is, that it's talking about the garment. And there's a strong case to say that loins don't include the genitals. And if you wear a garment from the loins to the thighs, it'll cover something. There is something between there. Um, and therefore, I don't know whether somebody can dogmatically just state that thighs are nakedness based on that verse. So I hope that clarifies that a bit. I hope that gives you a bit more clarity there. I know that's um, one important point to sort of stress. Um, okay, let's go to...